let's talk about this. I believe, I perceive that in many parts of the world, we ultimately reduce people, we label people to what their native language is and beyond anything else. So it doesn't matter so much their race or ethnicity or religion or even nationality. Even nationality is inferior to language. What if language was more powerful than race? And that's the question I'm asking. And you'll leave a comment and tell what you think and maybe we'll keep talking about it. But what if language supersedes race, ethnicity, even nationality? I think there's a good chance that it does. Now, at least my perception here in the United States is being surrounded by so many people who are from Mexico or of Mexican descent. If Spanish is their first language and you can tell that from their accent, what people do, and I'm not saying it's morally correct, I'm saying that it happens. I'm acknowledging that this exists. What happens is those people get referred to as Spanish. Now I know that's heresy for a person in Spain to hear that just because a person's first language is Spanish, that that automatically means that now we label them as Spanish. But in the United States, it happens. I'm not saying I agree with it, but it absolutely happens. If you can tell that a person's first language is Spanish, they are Spanish. It doesn't matter if they've got 0% Spanish DNA and they're 100% Native American and they happen to speak Spanish first, they're Spanish. So what if you look 100% Caucasian and you can tell that someone's first language is Spanish? Well, then in that case, ultimately, they're still gonna be lumped in there as Spanish. We'll do the same thing with someone who's French. I mean, you could be from Canada and be Canadian, but if, Engl but if French is your first language, there's a, we're still gonna call you French Canadian. That's what we're gonna do. And so now I'm trying to think, well, beyond French and Spanish, because those are the main two foreign languages that, that we're taught to acknowledge here in the United States. Isn't that funny? I mean, just, I, that should be its own video. But in the United States, those are the main two foreign languages we acknowledge. First Spanish, and then, okay, yeah, French, because we've got Maine and we've got New Hampshire, and they're kind of close. There's some, there's some states up there that they're close enough to people who speak French, so let's just throw them in there. And we've got Louisiana as well, so okay, yeah, French. Yeah, let's do that. So what about other places, though? See, that the problem is some places don't have their own language. I mean, to get really specific, and people will disagree with what I'm about to say, but let's just talk about people from Ireland. But Nick... Don't you know about the Gaelic language? Yeah, actually I do. I was an English major and I had to like, I had to memorize this whole long thing in that, in the Gaelic language. So I, I understand that, that it exists, but as far as in a modern day setting right now, for the most part, most people's native language is not Gaelic or Celtic or whatever you want to call it. I'm talking about a person's native language, their first language, that's ultimately largely what defines a person. And I mean, I, can, I think this is interesting a lot for people who are not in the United States. What makes a person African as opposed to African-American? Because if you're African-American, you speak English. That's your language. But if you're from Africa, say you're a taxi driver in Dallas, and you can tell that person has an, an African accent, they're African. So I think that Something we haven't done in my videos before is really acknowledge how much power that native language of person's first spoken language, how much that identifies a person, even beyond the color of their skin, their ethnicity, their race, or even their nationality. What are your thoughts on that? We've probably got more to discuss. Comments right here.